Hi, um, it's me Putu. Welcome to the Southeast Asia Economies and Business Economics. This video is pre-recorded to you. So if you're not able to attend our first offline meeting for some reasons, you can just simply watch this video. I've shared my PowerPoint presentation file to you. So please have a look at it when you are watching this video. Well, um, Southeast Asia economies and business economies. Um, to be honest with you guys, these two are actually two different courses, but we merged them for some reasons. I have no other option, but I'll try to connect them. Southeast Asia economies basically talk about macroeconomic perspectives of countries in Southeast Asia region. It talks about the size of the economy of a country, usually measured by a GDP, gross domestic product, right? It talks also about economic problems such as high inflation rate, poverty, unemployment, inequality, those sort of things, right? On the other hand, business economics talk about macro, I mean, microeconomic problems in the business world, right? For example, why do commodity prices go up or go down or drop, right? Should the government increase the level of minimum wage, for example? So again, these two courses are different from the economic branches standpoint, right? Even though they are different in the sense that macroeconomics and microeconomics are two different economic branches, we're gonna combine those conceptions to solve an economic problem in the context of Southeast Asia countries. In a case study section, for example, we're gonna analyze what businesses and the governments can do to solve or anticipate a further increase in the unemployment rate in Southeast Asia due to the COVID-19 pandemic. We can see this problem from different angles, macro and microeconomics, and that's gonna be interesting. And I hope you'll enjoy it. To pass this course, you've got to do your assignments very well and successfully pass the mid test and final exam, right? I expect to see 12 different groups in this class. Two people, at least in each group. I expect to see a relatively equal number of group members in each group. I've shared you a file and please have a look at table one. In the PowerPoint, each group must choose one topic or theme for a written and an oral assignment, right? Once again, each group must choose one topic or theme from table one. Master's degree students you've got to choose topic number one to topic number three. You're not allowed to choose topics other than these three topics. Pick one out of three topics, right? Bachelor's degree students, you can also join master's degree students groups with my permission, right? Um, each group prepares a paper discussing the chosen topic, right? Uh, please compile relevant information in your paper so that you can present it in 30 minutes. No specific requirement for margins, font size, font type, word count, or page length, or the structure of your paper, but please be aware of the paper marking criteria. I've shared a file regarding this matter, so have a look at it, right? And please submit your written assignment by meeting number three. That means in two weeks from now, at six o'clock in the morning, the latest, right? Once again, please submit your paper, your group work 
in two weeks from now, six o'clock in the morning, the latest. That means you can submit it earlier, right? No matter um, your presentation schedule, right? You have to submit it in meeting three, okay? Good. Now, let's move on to your oral assignment. Please prepare a PowerPoint presentation file and use it for your presentation. Again, it is a 30 minutes presentation plus a 15 minute question and answer session. Please check, you know, another file that I share regarding the criteria for marking your presentation and your response to questions in the Q&A session. Your written and oral assignments are worth 30 points each. And for mid-test and final exam, I'll let you, I, I will let you know the uh, detailed information when we are approaching them, right? Okay, I think that's clear. So let's move on to our core discussion today, right? Right, we're gonna talk about Southeast Asia, right? The economies, the economic problems. Um, as you may know, there are 11 uh, Southeast Asia countries, including Indonesia, you know, Malaysia, Singapore, Thailand, um, Philippines, uh, Brunei, Cambodia, right? Um, Myanmar, Laos, Vietnam, and Timor Leste. The youngest um, country, Timor Leste, or some people, you know, call it East Timor. It was a part of Indonesia, but in 1999, um, they um, requested for an independent. Um, it was hard time for Indonesia to release our brothers and sisters there, but the fact is that they decided to uh, to be apart from um, Indonesia. Anyway, um, Indonesia, the capital is Jakarta, right? Uh, you might be aware of the country's plan to move its capital from Jakarta in Java Island to Nusantara. Um, yeah, it is called Nusantara, and it is located in Borneo or in Kalimantan, right? Um, Malaysia, the capital is Kuala Lumpur, uh, pretty much, you know, the same or similar to Indonesia. Uh, we have um, pretty much um, similar um, in cultures and so on, including foods, yeah. Um, Thailand, yeah, the capital is Bangkok, really, really exotic um, capital of, of the country. Um, um, they, uh, I guess, they um, really respect for diverse backgrounds and cultures, right? Um, Philippines. Yeah, uh, Philippines, the capital is Manila, right? Uh, Brunei, Bandar Sri Gawan, Cambodia, Phnom Penh, um, Myanmar, uh, Nai Pitao, right? Laos, uh, the capital is Vientiane. Uh, correct me if uh, I pronounce it incorrectly. Vietnam, Hanoi, and Timor Leste. The capital is Dili, right? Uh, you can have a look at it. There are many um, sources uh, uh, talking about these uh, in more specific. So let's move on to um, uh, uh, the discussion about the economies and economic problems. Right, so uh, I just mentioned 11 countries in Southeast Asia. And I can say that among them, Indonesia, um, Singapore, Malaysia, Thailand, Brunei, and Philippines, they are the top 
six in terms of wealth, right? The GDP per capita, when I'm, when I'm talking about wealth, that means I'm saying about their GDP per capita, gross domestic per capita per year. So it is about how much each person in a country can enjoy the benefits of its economic development. I would say that. Uh, imagine that a GDP or gross domestic product is a pizza of an economy, right? A country like Indonesia, for example, can produce a giant pizza, right? However, Indonesia has lots of population. Consequently, each person can only enjoy a small slice of pizza. Now compared to Singapore, its pizza is not as big as Indonesia's, but its people are wealthier than Indonesia. Each person in Singapore can enjoy a bigger slice of pizza. And that's because the number of population in Singapore is not as large as Indonesia's, as simple as that, right? Now, let's have a look at the um, unemployment, typical problems in um, developing countries. Countries having population in a productive range of age, but having problems in opening up job opportunities would end up with an increase in unemployment rate, okay? There are lots of people that want to have jobs, but the job opportunities are very, very limited. So that's why unemployment problems arise. As simple as that, right? Another micro microeconomic problem is poverty, right? World Bank defines a poverty as a condition where someone cannot earn more than $1.90 Per day. The COVID-19 pandemic has worsened the condition, as you may know, in the sense that more people live with less than a dollar and ninety cents per day. In response, governments around the world have been injecting, uh, you know, kind of liquidity help uh, to help the poor survive, right? They need cash, they need to survive, right? Last but not least, Southeast Asia countries have been involved in international trades. This is interesting. They rely heavily on natural resources. They sell natural resources without adding value to them. They sell their natural resources not because they have been able to fulfill their domestic needs, but they have no clue how to proceed further, right? So that's, um, I guess, all the introduction of this course today. I hope you like it. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to this channel. Cheers. I'll see you next week. Bye now.